barrier so far today. Doesn't necessarily mean you had to to take the win, though. We know that Richardson can beat Harry Lavresen. He did it to the title last year. He did it last week. So here we go. It's sprint final time. The next of our ding-dong battles. No prizes for guessing who he supports. That's Australian green and gold, my friend. Up against the light blue. The leader that we know underneath. But this man bleeds orange. He's psyched, he's focused, he's ready. These guys now. Having to do the business. 117 points in the league lead. Richardson, 93. You can only claw back three points here, but every little helps. I think it helps indeed, but you know, the league standings aside, just this race, seeing these two giants of the world of sprinting going head to head, the winter before the Olympic Games, especially given that Richardson beat the phrase and last weekend on the Olympic track to be, you know, th this this rivalry is really hotting up ahead of the Paris Games. And, you know, I love that we get any opportunity to see these two guys race against each other. Of course, the Champions League is the Champions League here. We're looking at that. We're concentrating on that for the next 48 hours. However, there may be an opportunity. He might have just got into Lavresen's head against yeah. ahead of next year, winning on that track, as you said. Yeah, and, and sport is, you know, so psychological, as we know. There's, there's always sort of mind games going on, whether, whether you mean to or not. And, you know, if you can get in someone's head, you know, that, that, that could be the difference. At the moment, the race is moving incredibly slowly. So, Richardson is on the front, and he, he's not in any rush whatsoever. You know, we've seen how deep he goes in these heats, and at the moment, he's keen for to just to keep the pace slow. This kind of start is traditional match sprinting, isn't it? Yeah, and that's the difference with having the three up match sprints that we have for the heats and for the semi final. But now for the final, we come back to the sort of two up match sprinting that we not traditionally see at World Championships and Olympic Games. So this is more sort of the, the sort of territory these riders are used to, and you know, it does change the tactics, and that's why we're seeing the pace that bit slower. We know they like to experiment ahead of those big Olympic appointments too. They twist, they turn, and now Lavresen has taken that position one. But it's snatched straight back. Did he want it? He obviously did. Here he goes. Up and down the track they go, and now they have to speed up because they come into the bell lap. It is going to be Matthew Richardson to lead it out. He goes high, dives down, takes the 200 meter line. He has two, two and a half gap. But here is Harry Lavresen. Coming back out of turn four. It's Richardson still ahead. Lavresen improving. Lavresen advancing and snatching it right on the line. Harry Lavresen with a 9.787 at 73.5 kilometers per hour in those final flying 200 meters. That was special. That was very special indeed, and his teammates loved that as well. The, the crowd are loving quite how tight that was in the line, but Matt Richardson gave that absolutely everything. Look at the pain on this man's face. I love the tactics there. I love the ducking and diving. The race took the opportunity to come underneath. Richardson took it back again. This rivalry is a very special one in track cycling at the moment, and that did not disappoint. And you cannot call it. Once you get your rival in front, a lot of the time yeah. you're waiting on the wheel, but no, Richardson responded straight away by taking that position one again. They were ducking, diving, weaving, and in the end, here we go. The water meter, Harry Lafresson with 2,000 watts. Not too far off there from Matthew Richardson either. And Lavresen had to be at his absolute best to beat the biggest threat.